welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we continue answering all the questions you submitted for our Q&A session. We're still in the Airbnb in Ilfracombe. So the next section of questions is going to be about travelling. Where are you planning to go this year? Do you have any, are you planning to return to Europe or have you got plans to go? People have asked us various places like Scotland, Cornwall, Isle of Wight... Go on in, you ask, because well, you're the planner, I'm yeah, not. We've got a few things in mind. We haven't actually planned anything as such yet. Uh, we are hoping to go back to France mm. sometime this year. Yeah. And what we plan to do is, rather than drive through France and go to Spain like we did last time, yeah. we're probably going to go and um, just do areas of France in more detail. One region at a time. A region at a time. Yeah. So I have been doing a little bit of research um, in France of the Oort region. So that will probably be the next European trip we do. Yeah. As for this country... There well, are... the thing I would say about planning stuff, hmm. uh, I, I think it's a bit of a, you know, it's... Uh, the kiss of death sometimes we find yeah. planning something, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Because um, you spend all that time. You spend a lot of time. Somewhere. And then it doesn't happen for right. some reason. It intervenes. And yeah. I always feel guilty if you've mm. done a lot of planning. Mm. I like okay. to be a bit more spontaneous, mm. which mm. also gives us the ability to go in a different direction totally mm. without any problems at all if something's going amiss. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure we'll be in France fairly soon, I would have thought. Yeah. Um, as for this country... Mm. <laughs> well, we have, we were going to go and stay quite local because of the fuel prices. So we thought yeah. maybe uh, like Isle of Wight or Dorset or somewhere down south. Yeah. But now we're thinking... The van is very, very economical very on economical, fuel, so, so you know we're, we're only talking pennies. And then we thought well, we might continue our series going up the east coast. Yeah, we made it as far as um, North Lincolnshire, mm. so maybe we'll carry on up the east coast and maybe even get up into the east coast of Scotland. See how far we get. Yeah, and maybe do that, and d probably do that. In a combination of camper van and Airbnb, mm. wouldn't we? Yeah. Um, we're currently sitting in an Airbnb down in Ilfracombe. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't got the van with us. We've only got the car with us, haven't we? Yeah. Um, and I certainly am missing the van. Yeah. Are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're doing a bit of an experiment to see mm. what it's like staying in Airbnbs. Yeah. Um, we're finding it's very nice, but... Driving the car on these narrow Devon roads, you're yeah. finding it's harder than driving the camper van. Much harder than driving the camper van. Have to so, be so much more careful. Yeah, we're thinking maybe we'll do a combination of both on the next trip then. Bring the camper van and then you've got that if you want to go out for the day. Yeah. Even when you're staying in an Airbnb, you can yeah. just go out in the camper, have some lunch out in the camper somewhere. Yeah. Stay and then... You can go and stay in your camper van when you get fed up, check into an Airbnb. Yeah, I th we're thinking of trying this because we've got about a five-week limit, we find, don't we, in our little camper van before yeah. we're fed up and then you, you have to go all the way back home again yeah. for a break. Yeah. And by using Airbnbs, we could have that break still where we are, couldn't mm. we, and then continue as if it's a... Brand new trip. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that's, that's probably what we'd be trying might next. experiment with that next. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. See if it extends our trips. Yeah. So someone has asked, what has been your most memorable trip? Hmm. <laughs> well, I think, it's hard to say a yeah. most memorable. Um, if anybody ever asks me that, the ones that stick in my mind are always um, going to Iceland with our caravan, mm. uh, New Zealand, which was a fly drive, um, self fly drive trip that yep. we did, and India, which we went to, which was an escorted tour. Yeah. They were probably the most memorable, but 
there have been so many lovely trips. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I, probably the most unique trip was Iceland for mm. me because if you ever get the chance to go to Iceland, mm. particularly in a camper van or a caravan, mm. that is quite a magical place mm. because it's so different. Every area of that island is different yeah. from beautifully green to desert and like to mountainous, volcanic. rocky, volcanic. Yeah, and the waterfalls. <clears throat> it's constantly changing, covered in snow and ice and then yeah. lovely and sunny and warm. It, it was a really... Mm fascinating trip that was and i think because we went towing a caravan yeah just a normal car it made yeah. it even more memorable because we didn't see anybody mm. else doing that no we just had a front wheel drive mazda 6 didn't yeah. we i think yeah with a little iriba caravan mm. it was quite funny wasn't it because we arrived in is it sages Fjord. Sagesfjord. Sagesfjord. Yeah. And it was um, misty, wasn't it? We yeah. couldn't see the tops of the mountains. Yeah. And to get to the first destination, we worked, drove up that hill, yeah. do you remember? Yeah. And with a big stream of traffic behind us. Mm. And I, th you couldn't see the hill because it was just mist. And the van, uh, the, it was just running out of power, mm. wasn't it, mm. the car? Mm. And I had to pull over to let everybody pass, mm. thinking, oh, my goodness, we're not going to make it up this hill. Mm. Um, yeah, it, 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 it you can do it though in a two wheel drive car oh, quite yeah. easily. Well, you? we went in July, so yeah. like in the summer, obviously, oh, yeah, in the yeah. winter, you could no, do it no, no, in the winter. And the thing with that trip was the actual journey to get there and to get back was all part of the trip because yeah. it took so long to get there on the ferry, like it was uh, two days going, yeah, and then coming back, you had to stop off at the Faroe Islands, mm. they dropped you off there, you had to stay there for three nights which mm. was lovely, so you got to see a bit of the Faroe Islands as yeah. well. And then we went to Bergen in Norway, and you could get off the uh, ferry there yeah. for a few hours to look around Bergen and then come back. So. And the other trip I've enjoyed the most was that for, was it the first American trip we did where we went to the Grand Canyon and yeah, the Phoenix. a fly drive? The very first time we saw the Grand Canyon yeah. and Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, Los Angeles, yeah. Yeah, that was a great trip. Yeah, and we've been back several times since, mm. and it's, but it's never the same as the first time no. you see those But places. having said that, I'm happy going anywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm. I get just as much pleasure being down here in Ilfracombe, mm. where I used to come as a kid, mm. than going on any sort of grand trip. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. to me. Just, it's just being a way that I enjoy it. Yeah. Change of scenery. Change of scenery, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what was your overall view of the Isle of Man? Loved it, every minute of it. It was very relaxing, yeah. very laid back. Cause the most relaxing camper van trip we've, we've been on so yeah. far. I think because there, there's so few people there, mm. there's not a lot of traffic. It was fairly easy. Never had a problem finding people. anywhere to park up no, did we yeah no it's very easy never had anybody give us a dirty look Everyone saying what was are you really doing friendly yeah yeah some really unique places lots yeah. of lovely scenery yeah some quite, quite challenging little, little drives and things and yeah there. plenty to see and do i mean we yeah. spent three weeks there so uh and for such a small island i think yeah i'd happily go back happily anytime go and do it again yeah, yeah. Yeah. A bit pricey to get there. Yeah, that's the only downside. The There's ferry. only one ferry company, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. So. so they've got a bit of a monopoly there. Yeah. But once you're there, it's not a pricey place to stay. No, so. no. Yeah. Loved it. We would thoroughly recommend it. Anyone that's yeah. got a camper van, mm. it's a great place to go. Have you ever thought of wild camping in the heart of London? I watched um, Track Life to Van Life do it, didn't they we? They did it, yeah. They did it in their yeah. little camper yeah. and proved that it's pretty easy to do. Easy so to I think do. it would be quite easy for us to do it. Yeah. Would I want to do it? No, I don't think I would. Probably not. I mean, it would make a good video. Yeah. But, uh, but I wouldn't... We're not big fans of London We anyway. don't make videos to make a good video, though, do we? No. We just record what we've done Places from we'd want to basically go to. for our memories. Yeah. Yes, we've adapted them now mm. to be more relevant to uh, somebody else watching mm. in the way we talk to the camera and stuff like that. Mm. But we, I, I wouldn't, I'm not that keen on doing videos 
because I think it would be a a good video. Good video yeah. Um, yeah, London. Would I want to be up in London now? Be honest with you, I don't think I would. Um, so I don't think we'll do that. No. But having mm -hmm. said that, there are plenty of other cities I'd probably be quite happy very happy to, to go and yeah. camping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got various restrictions now, haven't you? Um, with the emissions. With the emission zones, zone. Although we're we're the um, what category six? Or yeah, so, yeah. The, we we're we're to. Euro six, aren't we? Yeah. The type that constantly breaks down and causes mm -hmm. a costs a fortune to repair. Mm. Yep. What country would you like to visit outside of the UK when possible? What would be your dream destination? I haven't got any dream destinations, have you? Mm. I think you might have. I've always wanted to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a place that I haven't been that I'd like to go to. Yeah. Um, and maybe, like, we've never been to South America. Mm -hmm. Well, we, so, haven't we? Can we South, do it on a cruise? Not South America. We've been, right. like, Caribbean and Central America. But yeah. Like Argentina, Chile, yeah. Peru. Yeah. yeah. That's places that I haven't been. But other than that, there's nowhere. You, like, you like warm, sunny beach holidays, don't yeah. you? That would be... Yeah. yeah. You would and, love that, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, and interesting. Like Japan is just a totally different culture, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, place. So that, I think that would be really interesting to visit. But as for in the camper van, we... Ha did say we were going to go to Scandinavia, didn't we? Oh, yeah, I'm sure yeah. we will do that. Um, somewhere we've never been. Yeah, definitely going to do quite a lot of France, I would think. Yeah. Spain we will do again at some point. Yeah. When as soon as it becomes easy, and, and I think we're probably there now, aren't we? As soon as we don't need any forms to Form prove it or any tests or yeah. anything, yeah. we'll get back over there. How many trips do you plan at a time and how much planning do you do before the trip? Well, I've probably already answered that a bit, really. We don't really do that much planning. Um, you look up, once we've fixed a destination yeah. or an area, you will start looking up what, what there is there to is see to and do. And I'll make notes of places. And you'll put pins on pins maps. On Google Maps, yeah. I'll just put pins and if anybody makes any suggestions of places to see, I'll mark them on Google Maps as yeah. well with a note of things. So I only do one trip at a time, won't plan any further ahead no. than that. No. Have a trip planned in the bag. Um, but it's so easy now to plan while you're actually on the road. Um, yeah, piece and, cake. Yeah, and we don't plan in any great detail as to say, right, day one we're doing this, day two we're doing this, because your plans change yeah. when you're on the road. So we just do like day to day, say, right, where are we going to go today? Um, I think it's mainly driven, for, for me, I don't do any planning at all really. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's driven by do I get bored at home? If I get bored at home, then I want to be off and gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, this trip we're on now was spontaneous, spontaneous wasn't it yeah. and mainly i i've got a volvo xc60 and i've hardly ever used it have i we've only used it to tour a tow a caravan well, we for a while. The caravan we used it for yeah but it's always occurred to me that it'd be a lovely vehicle to go on a long distance mm. trip in because mm -hmm. it can drive itself it's got all the it's toys on it it's comfortable drive, yeah. and that's what triggered this airbnb to try it see what it's like mm. but having tried it now i don't actually like driving that car <laughs> so i'm going to get shot on my volvo when we get back mm -hmm. i think and get something smaller that's more nimble and easy mm. to get around in but and just and use the camper van for uh, trips away mm -hmm. do you have any tips for driving on the right in europe the only tip, um, the only thing we did was we bought one of those reversible stickers from Halfords. Halfords. If you look at our um, Spain trip videos, you'll see it in the windscreen. And it just, con it's in your line of sight and it reminds you to drive on the right side of the road. 
and you you peel it off and you can turn it around for when you're back in England and it will give you the opposite reminder, just won't it? It's a visual warning Yeah, you can see just to remind you to drive on the right. <clears throat> the only other tip I'll give you is to, you must have a reminder for the first few days, you must have a physical reminder to drive on the on a, something that causes you to think, right, I'm, I've got to drive on the, mm. ro- on the other side of the road. Haven't you? Yeah. So you could tie a knot on your, your a hanky on your steering, steering wheel, wheel or something Some that, that forces yeah. you to rem- yeah. to think, right, this is why this is here. Mm. Drive on the on the correct side of the road. Because mm. we've had we had a couple of near misses, haven't we? Mm. Where I've gone round the roundabout the wrong way. Well, when we were towing the caravan a few years ago, yeah. when we went to France, you did actually drive round a little roundabout the, the wrong, wrong way. way. Yeah. Just before we got to a site. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so yeah. easy to do. Um, so that visual thing in the windscreen, have we got that on our? Did we get that? No, we got it from Halfers, didn't we? Halfers, so it yeah, won't be for the camper van. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's in our Amazon storefront. Oh, it is in our yes. Amazon storefront. Yeah. If you want yeah. one of those, um, the other thing is spend a little bit of time just learning the the road signs mm-hmm. and what they mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing we found useful was speed limits. If your vehicle. If you've got an electronic dash that you can switch to kilometres, then that's a piece of cake. Mm. But if you haven't, we put cards above the steering wheel, didn't Little we? sticky notes. Just to convert the, the speed miles limits. Per hour to kilometres per hour. Yeah. And you only need that for about a few days and yeah. then your brain you will have adjusted. It, yeah. And knowing what the <clears> speed <throat> limits are on the different types of roads. So yeah. just make a note on a little bit of sticky notepad. But as yeah. for actual driving, well, mm. it's no different to driving in this yeah. country. you just got to be aware of what's going on. And, yeah, you'd be surprised how you get used to it. Yeah, and, very quickly. And it's a lot easier when there's two of you driving, so you've got somebody that can look out. Yeah, yeah, that's that probably side. the most awkward part, isn't it? Yeah. When you're pulling out at junctions, you're on the wrong side of the mm. car to be able to see. Mm. So if your passenger can, can do that look for you, for it's you. all right. Yeah. But I wouldn't let driving that put you off going no, abroad because no. it really is it a not try. a big deal Give at all yeah. next question so are you considering taking the little red camper <coughs> to the usa or hiring an rv in the states um well we've been watching the travel beans their latest episode and they're talking about buying one mm. aren't they mm. and i think that's probably the be- if, it, if it can be done without too much hassle, that would be the yeah. most logical way to go to the States. We've looked up, um, well, we've been watching Tread the Globe, <coughs> who mm-hmm. um, went into detail about the costs of shipping a van over to the States. And we have looked up about hiring one out there, how much yeah. that would cost. Yeah. And that is extortionate for any length of time. Yeah. So the most cost-effective way would probably be to buy one. To go and buy one out, out there. there. So we'll be watching the Travel Beans with interest, see how they get on. Yeah. Apparently you need an American address. Yeah. Depending um, on what state you're in as well. Yeah. Um, and they said the getting the insurance is the most difficult aspect. Yeah, being but, a foreigner. Um, an American address, we probably know some people that might we help us there. We do know some people, yeah. So yeah. Um, it would be really nice to go to the to the to the states and do the camping. Yeah, yeah. and hire, yeah. hire or buy one. And we could yeah. af- we could afford to buy one out there. Yeah, yeah. no problem. So yeah, so something to think about for the future. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching. The next Q and A will be all about filming.